Good evening everyone. Time for this week's silver update. What you are looking at here is the 8 hour chart I've drawn and I've drawn in a couple of parallel trend lines go all the way back to about say a year, a little more than a year, maybe a year and three months and what these trend lines show you is that these are something similar to Bollinger Bands but Bollinger Bands are a little bit too fluid for me so I don't really use them but what these show you is that the general range or trend range that the prices are trading in you can see here that around March we touched the ceiling of overbought in this for this long trend range and then we immediately sold off and then we came back up and broke out of this trend range tested it and then that's when we took off so this was kind of like an outlier move a move that was an attempt to establish some kind of new trend range something like I would say something like this but of course this new range failed it was a little too steep of an ascent you have another one here the ascent was a little bit too steep and of course we got a correction so that's what you'll see in a market that begins to go exponential it will break out of an existing trend range and go into a new trend range it seemed to be holding up until it broke down really hard but anyway as you can see the trend is still intact you can also see that our MACD has bottomed in an amazing way. We're now at negative 2.73, so that's by a large margin, the largest sell-off we've had in a year and three months. If we go out to the daily, we're still not in the negative range, although we're down at the zero line. So I think once all is said and done, we probably will have a larger sell-off than any time since 2008. But again, we might not. We might bounce and not penetrate this or this. So we'll just have to wait and see. So far, what we're looking at here is simply a healthy correction in a rapidly rising bull market. So I feel sorry for a lot of those. And I've had a lot of people PM me and ask me questions about what should I do? Well. I never have advised anyone to invest in futures or the SLV or in fact miners. I simply advise people to buy physical silver and I've actually recently tried to advise people exactly what physical silver to buy to shield you from these types of moves. That's one of the re that's what I do myself and that's what I highly recommend that you do. So I wanted to visit one of those that I've been recommending very strongly. And that's this Silver Grizzly. Now it's still available on Tolving, roughly $4 above spot. I think he's listing spot at 35 something. You're still talking 40 bucks a coin. And you can see here on eBay, when we do a lookup, this is after yesterday, after the big drop there's a lot of them available people are trying to sell them obviously make a little bit of money for themselves but here's one that sold one bid 56.99 this is the sixth that's today so yesterday's all factored in here's another one 58 here's another one 61 here's another one 59 here's another one 50 these are all in the sixth now here's a uh, 43 42 that's kind of an outlier somebody got a deal on that one here's 151 so you can see for the sixth they're still going now a lot of people who criticized me and said why are you listing eBay well because eBay is a free market and it's showing you the prices that these are going for they're out of stock on Atmex they're out of stock on Gainesville Tolving has some left that are shipping they're out of stock at the mint they're not making any more of them so 
I really like to emphasize this point that you can shield yourself from these types of violent moves in the paper markets by simply accumulating a very strong numismatic ounce and ultimately it won't it won't pay if you're totally convinced that silver is going to hundreds and thousands of dollars an ounce and under no circumstances will you sell below five hundred dollars you'd probably be better off getting rounds because you can get them cheaper but in the long run I it doesn't really matter to me and I like these coins I, I like artistic coins I like coins that are made by the mints of the of the world also a big benefit on this one it's four nines that's just fantastic unheard of four nines so I, I just love this coin and I highly recommend it I, I don't see any reason for people not to get it and it's gonna go once it's gone it's gone just like my silver tigers so let's go ahead and do those we can just go in here and put tiger to find our sold ones and when they're gone they're gone so this is lunar series one that's not the coin I have that's eighty one dollars and I don't know what they mean by fine nude that's that's some private mint so here's our coin here well that's the mouse so here's the latest one on the fifth so you can't really find it it hasn't sold people aren't willing to part with them here's one very interesting ten bids and someone paid two hundred and thirty seven dollars for one ounce and NGC rated now, I don't know what my tubes are I, I think the uh, price for an NGC rating is about 25 bucks a pop so I guess it might be worth it if I think I've got a lot of MS 70s in there that uh, if I paid 25 bucks a pop for one of those rolls of 20 and I could turn around and sell it for two hundred thirty seven dollars an ounce so that's a little bit of an idea what's happening in the physical I want to segue to another site here I haven't really dealt with a lot but I wanted to go to Bullion Direct's Nucleo Exchange and that's a site where people can trade silver and gold back and forth based upon prices they set just some interesting observations here first of all you can see boxes of silver american eagles the bid is nineteen thousand three thirty three the ask hundred and fifty thousand dollars so no one's willing to part with a box of silver eagles at the current paper manipulated prices we can also go down here and look at canadian maple silver coins a crate a sealed crate eighteen thousand there's a lot of people who want to buy them 25 boxes bid for 18,600 but nobody willing to sell them so you've got your Johnson Mathy 100 ounce you can see here where's the Johnson Mathy 100 ounce bars and their bid at 35.40 but anybody that has one isn't going to take less than 5000 for one. So more evidence the price of physical is still around, still around 50 bucks. So we're entering into a shortage rationing situation. And I wanted to use that to segue into rationing. So you can understand that. When we go over this, you'll understand how this is what we're looking at. Rationing is the controlled distribution of scarce resources, goods, or services. Rationing controls the size of the ration, one's allotted portion of the resources being distributed on a particular day or a particular time. In economics, rationing is an artificial restriction of demand. It is done to keep price below the equilibrium or market clearing price determined by the process of supply and demand okay so when you see rationing you do not have a free market 
price determined by the process of supply and demand in an unfettered market complementary to price controls. An example of rationing in the face of rising prices took place in the Netherlands where there was rationing of gasoline in the 1973 energy crisis. A reason for setting the price lower than would clear the market may be that there is a shortage which would drive the market price very high. High prices, especially in the case of necessities, are undesirable with regard to those who cannot afford them. Traditionalist economists argue, however, that high prices act to reduce waste of the scarce resource while also providing incentive to produce more. That's so important. The cure for a shortage is higher prices. The higher the prices go, the more incentive there is to produce more. This is a suppressed market. This is a market where they're not allowing a true clearing price. That's why you're seeing shortages, rationing of the physical because they've disconnected the physical market from the paper market and you're seeing shortages, rationing, and delays. That's a sure sign that the free market is not being allowed to trade. So that's really important and I like to go over it over and over again because it's something people need to understand. It's not a mystery that there have been multiple instances where silver has been unavailable at the spot price physically for many times over and over again since March of 2008 when the first Bear Stearns debacle occurred. So this is an artificial market. There's a shortage of physical silver. The price needs to be much, 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 much higher to clear the market and eventually we'll get it. It's just a matter of time. And uh, last of all, I'd like to segue into my channel. I've received quite a bit of criticism regarding my support of the SLA, the Silver Liberation Army, and some of the people involved. I've got a list of silver gurus here. Silver Futurist is a big one on that. He likes to wear his SLA silver shirt and etc. And people mock it and think it's stupid and joke about it, but... I want to make a little point here using some of the math. I've added up these, just these guru channels. This includes the ones that I consider the gurus. I've listed my channel here and I'm trying to compare them based on subscribers. But if we just go through subs, I added them up earlier to save time, we come up with just from these gurus, we get about 75,000 subs. So you can pretty much assume that there's some cross referencing a lot of the people that are subs on one channel will be subs on the other so but a lot of them aren't so you can guess I would guess roughly we're looking at maybe 20 probably 30 maybe 40 let's go with 50 just to be bold and look towards the future and say we have 50,000 subs on these so just to do some simple math let's take 50,000 these are real silver bugs, serious about silver, serious about stockpiling the physical. And let's say that those silver bugs buy 10 ounces. That's 500,000 ounces of silver. Well, let's say that they buy 100 ounces. They're all in a decent economic position, so that's times 10 again that's five million ounces now if you remember the investment demand for silver is roughly 250 million ounces a year the available deliverable on the comex is anywhere from 25 million to 100 million we don't really know but so if we just took all our silver bugs which is a tiny fraction this is just the people on these channels and if each one of them bought 100 ounces, we're at 5 million ounces. Now that's potentially as high as 5 or even 
of what's deliverable on the comics. So it's not a joke. It's not a game. These people, the little guys, this I've repeatedly said this, this is David versus Goliath. It is physical silver, and it's the stake in the heart of the financial vampires. It is the bullet that slays the Wall Street werewolves. It is the battle of the little guy against the big corrupt guys, and it's a battle that can be won just by buying physical silver and ignoring this paper price. And we'll talk to you next time.